I'm making a video today talking about New Holland skid steer um, bucket function lockout. So this book here is for an L175, but this will apply to other um, New Holland skid steers and, and really just other brand skid steers in general. Uh, so let me show you where this is we're talking about. We're talking about under the operator station, sometimes it's under the seat in this particular machine, sometimes you have to raise the cab. But uh, what brought this up is the gentleman uh, was having a trouble. He's got an L220, and in the L220, the seat doesn't come up like this, the whole cab ha uh, comes up. Well, to get the cab up, you gotta have the arms up. To get the arms up, you know, he's got a, maybe a problem down here. So this is the, the valve. This is a foot, foot control machine. So the valve is kind of down here between the feet and there's a box over it. Well, in the two L220, it's probably under the cab. So on that control valve, you've got your, your, uh, your hydraulics come in and, and going out to the bucket and boom and aux functions and your levers from your pedals coming in. Uh, here where your pedals are coming in, one of these is boom and one of them's bucket, you have two solenoids, and these solenoids will lock out these boom and bucket functions um, until a couple criteria are met. So uh, the couple criteria that are met is the service slash run switch is in this, it must be in the run position. Well, where the heck is the service slash run switch? I believe that it is behind the fuse cover on most of these New Hollands, and it's just a switch that in my case, doesn't say nothing on it. Um, so make sure you know where that service run switch is and that it's in the run position. I believe it just locks out those bucket and boom functions so that uh, when you're working on the machine, you don't rip yourself in half, okay? Um, so, you know, here it's, here's the, the, the troubleshooting. Boom and bucket will not function. So another thing they say is that, the, you know, the solenoids are malfunctioning or what controls the solenoid is malfunctioning or the pump shaft is broken. So your boom and bucket functions are in a third pump. And if that pump seized up or, or uh, you know, the, the connection between it broke, you wouldn't have those functions. So um, let's look a little more into... Um, how that works so yeah here here you're seeing um that that thing again there um so they they have a couple things with testing for the uh um those control valve spool locks and what they're saying here is um you know put put everything into the right condition you've got the key in the run position butt in seat seat belt fastened okay there's here's your four Here's your four uh, requirements for that solenoid to come on. Butt in seat, service run in, in run position, seat belt fastened, ignition switch on. Well, here they're saying off. So with it off, they're saying that you should not be able to press the pedals. The pedals are firm. You cannot, you just physically can't move them, okay? And then when you satisfy all the conditions, you turn the ignition switch on, seat belt fastened, service run in run, butt in seat, you should be able to push the control, okay? So uh, if you've got the engine running and all these conditions are satisfied and you can push the control now, but your boom and bucket functions don't work, it means you don't have hydraulics for some reason. Pump shaft snapped, relief valve um, open up and just barfing out all your pressure. But if you can move the pedals, the solenoids, okay, right? So that's, that's something important to know. And then let's look here at uh, two more little things. So, okay, where was that uh, section I was gonna show you? Okay, so, I guess that was what I was going to show you there. So let's pretend, let's pretend here failure mode wise that um, for some reason you, um, your solenoids aren't coming on. Maybe we can trick them, right? Maybe there's something, maybe your seatbelt doesn't work and you don't know it yet. Maybe, uh, you know, something else isn't satisfied. 
What turns these solenoids on? There's two solenoids. These two here. Let me get, get in close so you can kind of see wire colors and whatnot. What controls that? Well, it's what they call the instrument cluster monitoring system. So that's the little skinny panel on the left that's got your tachometer and, and your buttons and things like that. Uh, and a lot of these are the same on these. Here's what you're looking for here. Hydraulic interlock out. And here it shows pin number 14, but this is an L175, okay? And then here's your wire number and all that. Uh, and then it comes out and has a splice in it. And it goes down and it goes to both these two connectors. Here's your solenoid, solenoid. They're grounded and grounded. You can find this wire behind here. You could tickle it with 12 volts, you know, and see if you can get these solenoids to click, right? Um, I'm not sure what their coloring is here, but uh, um, yeah, boy, it's hard to tell what the colors are. But um, if you can get behind your instrument cluster and look for this hydraulic interlock out, 14, um, that's what you're trying to get. This gentleman can't get to these physically because he can't get the cab up. So maybe with the machine running, he could run a little jumper wire over back behind there, tickle this with 12 volts, and get his pedals up. Uh, I remember now what I was going to show you here. Uh, it talks about... Um, some testing uh, for the for that um, interlock. The um, because that instrument cluster um, knows it, it measures resistance. It knows if those sil that those solenoids are um, plugged in or not. Okay, and it also knows if they're shorted. So um, you know here it says you know, check procedure, turn the key on, sit in the seat, uh, attempt to move the boom and bucket foot or hand controls. Controls should not move, okay? Fasten your seat belt then and, uh, you know, fulfill all the prophecies. Now attempt to move it, the controls should move, okay? And then it says, if the EIC, which is what they're calling their little dashboard, shows an FOA fault in the readout display, this is an indication of a shorted or open circuit of the solenoid locks. Okay, and then they go on further to say, unplug one solenoid at a time and check for battery voltage at the main wire harness plugs. Pink, light blue, and black wires. The operator must be in the seat with the belt belt buckled. Uh, and then it says, but note, if both solenoids are unplugged, it will show an FOA fault and there will be no voltage from the, <laughs> excuse me, EIC to the solenoids. So, um, yeah, if the plunger moves and power supply, check for binding, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, so it is telling us here, and maybe this will be the same. It is saying pink and light blue and black wires. Um, yeah, so maybe this pink and light blue is one to look for, uh, you know, because these wire together and then they go up back to that uh, instrument control. So... I would check that, and maybe that's a, a quick and dirty way to uh, um, fire those solenoids up and uh, and see if you can get them working so you can get your machine cab up and fix it.